Becoming a senior software engineer isn't going to happen to you just overnight. It also, unfortunately, is not guaranteed to you with age, like gray hair. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about how you must be seen as an innovator in your organization and how you must also elevate your team. So what exactly do I mean by you need to become an innovator? Well, it's pretty simple. You need to become a change agent for your organization and your team. No one ever became great or innovative by just doing the same thing day in and day out. So you need to spark change in your organization. But how exactly are you going to do that? My journey to becoming a change agent was right around the time Spring Boot was really taking off. I watched a YouTube video by Josh Long and got his quote ingrained in my head, make jar, not war. I had just begun playing a little bit around with Spring as a framework and really understanding it. So I was like, let me pick up Spring Boot and really see what this thing can do. At the time, I was writing a lot of database crawlers for my organization in Perl. These database crawlers were pretty simple. They were just going into our database row by row and we were updating fields. Usually it was sometimes we didn't have the data at that time on how it was inserted, so we need a crawler to go through and usually sometimes fix stuff, usually with like medical codes or stuff. So I was tired of writing the Perl scripts because it would take me like an entire day, day and a half of writing these scripts. I didn't really like writing Perl in general. I was really comfortable with Java. I was, you know, only two, three years under my belt as a developer, and I just, you know, like right in Perl, it just was like straight up, down, it wasn't really object oriented that much as I was used to. So I looked in the Spring Boot and Spring Data, and it literally changed my career. At the time, I was using Spring Boot and Spring Data, no one else on my team was really using it at all. Uh, they knew about Spring, but they didn't really do much with Spring Data or any other dependencies that were out there. Spring was really just kind of taken off for them. So I really dug in deep, really learned it, and I found myself able to write these crawlers rather than in a Perl script in like a day, day and a half. I was writing them in just a few hours. So I was like, wow, this is great. My team really needs to know about this. And I got a little lucky in that I had two interns underneath me that I was kind of mentoring. So I kind of used them as my guinea pigs for Spring Boot, Spring Data to use this instead of writing Perl scripts. So I got them to pick up some books on Spring Boot, really got them into the documentation of Spring Data and said, all the tasks that we give you, which we basically handed the crawlers over to them once we got interns, which was great. I don't want you writing in Perl. I don't want you writing in just plain straight Java. I want you to utilize the Spring Framework and write these crawlers with it. So after noticing all of this repeatable code, we started making those our own dependency jars. So we had one database, we'll just call it the CIS database. We knew we had to write a crawler for a table that was in this database. So I had them immediately check out a project that was just a stubbed out Spring Boot project, had them pull in a dependency that was already coded up all the Spring data persistence objects and everything for that database. They pulled that in and right away, boom, they were ready to actually just write the business logic of the crawler. They weren't wasting 50, 100, 150 lines in either a Perl script or even in their Java code anymore just to get the database connection going for the crawler. They were immediately, check this out, check that out, bam, we're writing business logic, we're running the crawler against the dev database in 20, 30, 45 minutes max, depending on the day. So weeks went by, interns are getting a lot of their work done very fast, very efficient, and word just starts traveling around the team. Hey, they started using Spring Boot. JT over here is the one that introduced them to Spring Boot, Spring Data. What else can we use this for? And that's how the organization kind of took off using Spring Boot applications for almost any new Java project that we wrote. So that might have been a little long-winded, kind of roundabout way, but that's just an example of how you need to be an innovator. Find some new tech out there, play around with it, 
and then hand it off to somebody else to also play around with it and see if it just kind of snowballs into something. Uh, another great way that you can get exposed to new tech besides going out on YouTube is going to conferences. I know it's a little crazy right now in 2020, but that's the biggest way I got exposed to a lot of new technology was going to conferences. Something like No Fluff Just Stuff Tour, which is a big conference around Java, which is great because it's not a lot of pop and circumstance. It's literally just stuff and no fluff. The hope was going to these conferences, being exposed to all of this, this new tech, these new ways of doing things. If there was a hundred different things that came at me, if I took at least five, 10 of those things and brought it back to my team and taught it out to them, did a lunch and learn lecture on it, send out a demo of an application with some slides attached on, hey, maybe we should try to start doing this. That is going to start innovation. That's going to start the snowball effect of change. That is how you're going to be seen as a chain agent to your organization and your team. So we've talked about how you can be a change agent for your organization, for your team. How you can make small little changes and see them snowball into major changes and you know pro promote growth on your team. How exactly now do you elevate your team? So as you're moving towards becoming the senior member of the team and people are starting to kind of look up to you, you want to make sure that you don't have this giant gap between where your skill set is and where your team is. Because as task and more work comes in, you have to hand that work off to some of them. And is it going to be easier to hand off the work when there's a gap like this? Or when there's a gap like this? So how can you elevate your team and close that gap? We'll go back to the beginning when we talked about you're becoming a change agent, you're leading change, and you hope it snowball effects around your team. Well, that right there hopefully is going to start just slowly elevating your team because you're inspiring them. You're learning new tech. They see it. They think it's cool. They want to learn new tech. They might even chase new tech you don't even know about. So now you're inspiring younger team members, less experienced team members, and you kind of have built kind of this natural following now. So put it to good. Elevate your team give them opportunities. Go back to the interns. I introduced them to Spring Boot, Spring Data. They were writing these database crawlers. I immediately thought, hey, I got another challenge for them. We work with another technology, MQ, reading and writing off of queues. Writing the Perl scripts when we had to do other little maintenance applications for them was, was terrible. It took even longer. It's IBM work. So I said, hey, what can we do with Spring? Is there something in Spring where we could just write a class up, throw some annotations on it, and all of a sudden we could be reading and writing to these cues? Sure enough, a week later, my intern came back to me and said, hey, I got it. Pull in your base Spring Boot app. If we need to pull in the, the Spring data, dependency that we created for, say, the CIS database. Okay, we can pull that in. But I got this other dependency you can pull in, where all you have to do is set these properties. The queue you want to read from and the queue you want to write to. You just put the string names of those queues in. Everything else is taken care of. Immediately, we are reading and writing the queues. We are talking to databases in less than an hour's work. So you've inspired them, you've taught them the ways, you know, of being the Jedi coder. You, you have a little bit of a following. Keep going at it. Keep trying to elevate your team by giving them what I call slices of the pie. When you get challenged by senior leadership or just leadership in general to do something, give those around you on your team that aren't say as skilled as you are, give them little slices of the pie. It takes me back to when I was an undergrad. During my senior year, something that we were allowed to do was called an independent study. All, all of the professors that were doctors there that continue to do research, they allow you for a semester to do an independent study with them, where they will take their research and they will give you a little section of it and say, hey, 
go work on this, go learn this for the whole semester, let's meet once a week, go over what you've learned, and I'll give you basically an A at the end of the semester because you're learning and that's the whole point. Do that with your team. Take something new, like all of a sudden your organization's like, we wanna learn NiFi. Okay, cool. Find someone on your team that's eager to learn new tech and be like, hey, Joe, I want you to spend this week telling me everything there is to know about NiFi. And then let's give a presentation to the team at the end of the week on everything you've learned about NiFi. Now Joe is seen as a NiFi, could be the subject matter expert going forward on the team. You just elevated Joe. He's starting to get a little clout now. So those are my thoughts on how to innovate and elevate your team. Let me know what you guys thought about this video. Leave a few comments down below. As always, don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications if you want to be notified the next time a video drops. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.